Hey, I'm Danny. I've been working on a print and play board game that I'm releasing really soon, and I thought I'd show you guys how it works. It's called Dwarven Mind Shenanigans. It's a one to four player game. It takes about a half an hour to an hour, and I wrote it to be a one player game mostly. So it's a solo game, and the idea is you're, uh, you're a bunch of dwarves, and you've got a, a mine that is overrun by goblins, and one night in the dining hall, some dwarves start to boast, and before long there's a bet placed, and someone thinks that they can go in and clear out the mines on their own. And then everyone gets in on the bet. So now you've got a bunch of dwarves who are going to clear out the mines on their own. And when the king gets, when the king gets wind of it, he decides to support the whole thing and starts paying out for getting through the mines. So it's a fun little game where you pushing as far as you can into the mines and buying new equipment every time you do it and getting rewarded based on your bet. You're going to bet how far you can get. And if you get there, you're going to get rewarded for it. If you don't get there, you're not going to get the same rewards. And if you die, you're just playing out. So now I'm going to give you a quick look at some of the pieces and I'm going to show you how to set up and play. Pretty much what you're going to get, you're going to get a manual and you're going to print it out. It's seven pages. You're going to get uh, a bunch of counters and cards, which you're also going to print out. You'll cut out all these counters and you'll cut out these cards. You're also going to want a handful of dice. I find about eight red, eight blue, and one extra do pretty good. A couple tips on making your pieces. Uh, print out front and back. I print it out on some cardstock and then just cut them with a paper cutter and they come out pretty good. For another version, uh, I printed them out on foam board and then I glued, so I printed, I glued it to some foam board and then I cut straight through the foam board with an X-Acto knife and like a cutting board. And these came out a little better. They're, they're much easier to grab compared to the paper with the cardstock. For the cards, they're just printed front and back on cardstock. For the placard, the foam board worked out pretty well, but also these cardstock ones worked out pretty well too. Here's the starting setup. I'm just gonna pan and then I'll explain it real quick. So go ahead and collect your dice, collect your various types of counters. These are all plus a number. These are all square counters, two colors. Here's some hearts, and this is all money. You're gonna, to start the game, you're gonna get your dwarf, whatever color you want. You're gonna give it 10 life. You're gonna get 75 money to start with, and you're gonna find your bet card of your color. You're gonna shuffle all the tunnel decks separately and line them up like this. Then you're gonna find the you're here card and put one counter on it and the three runs card and put one counter on the first run. I like to get an extra die and put it here on the third run and I'll explain that later. To keep this shot less crowded, I'm just gonna push some of this stuff away. You're ready to go into the mine for your first run, but you have to have equipment first. The way this is gonna work is all the dwarves are all going into the mine on their own, maybe with a friend, and they're trying to clear out a mine, make a bet on how far they can go, and then pass that bet. They're gonna do it three times. That's part of the whole shenanigans that the king put together. Any dwarf that goes into the mines is gonna get paid for every, dwarf, every goblin they kill. But also, there's a bet involved, so you're gonna bet how far you think you can get, and you may double your bet or more, but you have to get as far as your bet in order to receive a payout. To go into the mines, each dwarf needs to get a hammer and some armor. And to do that, we start with 75 gold. And if you go grab the manual, on the second page, you have all your options. The concept here is that you're dwarves and you can get anything. A dwarf can make any type of hammer and a dwarf can make you any type of armor. So you're gonna get exactly what you want when you go into the mines. The trick is, what are you gonna, what's your strategy? To get that, let me show you how to roll. When you roll in this game, you're gonna roll a certain number of dice. Let's say my hammer does two, two dice. You roll your dice and then it's gonna be a target number. So say my target number is five or more. If I roll these two dice and anything lands on five or more, that's gonna be a hit. So in this case, I rolled two dice, I got one hit. If I had rolled another five or a six, that would have been two hits. If I would 
only had one die for my hammer, then I could only ever get one hit total. If I have a lot of dice, of course you can get a lot more hits. That target number makes a big difference. See right here, if I had a target number of three, then I would have gotten three hits. If I had a target number of two or more, I would have gotten four hits. Vice versa, if I had a six or more, I would have only gotten one hit. So knowing how the dice work, let's buy a hammer. So the way this table is set up, each table is the number of dice and there's your target number and how much it's gonna cost you. So for example, I could buy one D6 hammer that has to, hits on a six or more for five gold. Or I could buy one that hits on a two or more for 25 gold. What I just showed you with the number of successes you can get involves the number of dice you're rolling. That means if I had an enemy with two damage, I would have to have at least two dice to kill it. And if not, there's no point in even being in that battle. So you want more dice, but you also want them lower so they'll hit. So there's a trade-off there, and you're going to have to find your strategy. The armor works the same way. In this case, you're rolling to defend yourself against the goblins. And I'll explain that in a minute. For now, let's just buy something and record it on our dwarf's card. Here we go. I'm going to buy... 3d6, 6 plus for 15 gold, and I'm going to buy the equivalent over here for 10 gold. So to record that, I have three counters, three dice for my hammer at 6 plus, and I have three for my armor at 6 plus, and I'm going to pay this 25 to get these dice. But you know what? I have a lot left here. Let's, let's see if I can upgrade one of these. I'm going to bring this hammer up from 3d6 for a 6 plus to a 5 plus, which is a 15 more gold. So let me just pull out another 15 gold and I'm gonna bump this over here to a 5 plus. Next thing I'm gonna do is place my bet. When you place your bet, you put your money on your card, and then you put your card somewhere in the tunnel. If I were to put it right here, that means when I finish tunnel one and I pass this to start tunnel two, I've achieved my bet and, and there's going to be a payout for that as opposed to putting it down here where I would have to pass both one and two to get the three. And you know where you are with this card. So as, the, as this card moves, you'll very clearly see if you got your bet or not. So I'm going to talk about this bet and the payouts based on where you put it. I've got a chart here that you can pause and read if you want, but I'm going to explain it. So after tunnel one, the bet payout is for every two coins you put in, you'll get a coin out. So if I bet 10 and I make my bet, that means I'm going to get five out for a total of 15. If I were to put this on the next one, after tunnel two, you double your money. So if I get that bet, I would walk away with 20. After tunnel three, you get two times your money. So it pays out one to two. So I'd walk away with 30. And then it goes up for four and it goes up for five. So you really do want to place your bet as far as you can to get the best payout. But you also don't get paid out if you die or if you leave early. So you have to really judge how far you think you're going to get. One of the ways you can judge is that all of the goblins in this deck have nothing higher than a 1 on them. All the goblins in this deck have nothing higher than a 2, nothing higher than a 3, nothing higher than a 4, and a 5. So you can tell whether or not you can even kill something by which tunnel it's in. For example, if I have a hammer with one die, I can kill, possibly, anything in that deck. But nothing, not nothing, but... In this deck, there's going to be a bunch of things with life of two, and I won't have enough damage to do that. And I'm going to explain the goblins in battle in a second here. So even to start this deck, you're going to want to walk in with a hammer that has two dice. Okay, so I have bought my hammer and my armor. I have placed my bet. I'm putting 35 here after tunnel one, and I'm ready to go for my first run through the, the tunnels. Whenever you start a run in the tunnel, you always put your here at the tunnel one with one counter on it and you mark which run you're on on that track. 
For every step through the tunnel, you're going to reveal some goblins for goblin encounter. You're going to look at this card and see how many checks are on it and what deck it's pointing at, and then you're just going to reveal that. Start revealing cards for that number. So in this case, I reveal one. Let's say I, I kill that. After the battle is over, you make a roll to see if you've cleared out the whole tunnel. You're going to roll a d6, and you're trying to roll under this number. And clearly you can't do that on the first time, on the first try. So I've gone to the next, the next step into the tunnel. The, I created Goblin Encounter. In this case, there's going to be two. Let's say I beat that. I'm going to roll to see if I've got under two. Uh, I didn't get under, I got exactly. So I'm still in tunnel one. I'm going to add a counter, and this time I'm going to flip three. So here I've created an encounter for three from tunnel one. Let's say I beat them. I'm going to roll again to see if I get under that three. I didn't. I got the three. But let's say I got a two. What would happen is I would be able to move on. And this would progress to the next tunnel. I would start over with one check for the number of steps I've taken into that tunnel. And in this case, I would have passed my bet and I would be able to collect that if I leave the tunnel. From here, I have a choice. Do I continue forward and start fighting goblins from Tunnel 2, or do I exit now for no penalty and get my, my bet? On top of all of these goblins that I've killed, they're worth one gold each. One thing that slightly changes when you get to higher tunnels, let's say I got to Tunnel 2, and I draw my one card, and I beat it. I step up. This time when I draw two cards, I start with tunnel two, and my second card, I go down a tunnel. And that would be an encounter for, for number two. If there were three checks on it, I would go tunnel two, tunnel one, and then I would start over. So my third card would be from tunnel two. If, for example, I was at tunnel three with three checks, I would get card from here, a card from here, and a card from here. Let's take a quick look at the goblin cards themselves. So I've flipped a card from tunnel one and a couple cards from tunnel two. Here's what we have on the card. We have a description of the goblin and we have its attack and its defense. In tunnel one, every single card is going to be a one one. In tunnel two, here are the three cards you're going to encounter. You're going to have something with a 2 for defense, a 2 and a 2 for attack and defense, or a 2 for just the attack. When attacking with your hammer, you roll the number of dice that are indicated on your card. You count your successes. In this case, I got 1. And then you can kill a goblin that has that defense or less. So I have 1 success. I can kill this goblin with a 1 defense. I cannot kill the goblin with a 2 defense. The way this game works, you must kill them with one attack. So this first attack, I could have killed this goblin. I could try again. Again, only one success, so I couldn't kill this goblin. I, now I have two successes, so now I can kill this goblin. When goblins are attacking, it's the opposite. You have your defense dice. In this case, I need a six plus to defend. So all of the goblins attack at once. In this case, this one's going to be attacking me for two, and this one's going to be attacking me for one. So I'm going to roll my defense. I got no successes, which means I'm going to get hit for two, and I'm going to get hit for one. So I'm going to pull this three off my card. If I had gotten a one, I could have blocked this guy and only taken two damage. But I could not have blocked this guy. In order to block him, I would have had to have two successes, to block him. You have to block the attack entirely. So if I had rolled this, I would have only taken one damage. In battle, the goblins and the dwarves take turns attacking each other. If you look over here, on the first run, dwarves always get the first attack. In the second run and in the third run, goblins always get the first attack. And in the third run, there's an extra thing called goblin reinforcement, which I'll explain in a second. 
So when a battle starts, either the goblins or the dwarves will go first, and then they'll switch. On a dwarf's turn, they have a choice between attacking or running away. If they decide to flee, then the goblins get a free attack, and then they're out of the tunnel. If they've already passed their bet, which in this case, they're in tunnel two, so if they've already passed their bet, they would get it. If they hadn't passed their bet, they, this money would just forfeit back to the, the horde. If you flee during a battle, you're going to get hit one more time. If you flee in between moving this you're here card, then you can flee without that extra attack. On the third run, there's a special thing that happens, which is goblins get reinforcements. So if you have a battle and the goblins take a turn and the dwarf takes a turn, after the dwarf's turn, if there's any goblins left, you roll a die. And if the die is equal to or less than wherever you happen to be, you draw a card from that tunnel. So in this case, I rolled a two. So I would draw one more of these cards and put it right into battle. And then battle would continue. And again, after the dwarf's turn is over, if there are still cards here, you would roll. And again, I rolled a two. If I had rolled a one, I would have pulled one of these. If I had rolled three or higher, nothing would have happened because I have, this is where I happen to be. If I had been up higher, it would have been. If I roll a three, two, or a one, goblins are going to get a reinforcement card. After you exit the tunnel, you look to see if you've gotten past your bet. If you have, you get your payout. Then you count up all of these goblins that you've killed. Every card is worth one gold. So you give yourself payout from your bet to here, and you count these, and you get that money, and you put it here. Put all these goblins back into the correct decks, reshuffle those decks, and now buy new armor and new hammer for your next run through the, the tunnels. So you, this will bump up one, this will reset, and you're ready for your second run. On your third run, the goblins will be getting their reinforcement. After your third run, when you exit, you're going to get your payouts from any bets, you're going to get your payouts from any goblins you killed, and then you're going to sell your equipment and get paid back for however much your equipment was worth. You're going to take your total number of gold and you're going to compare it to this chart at the award ceremony. And you'll find out whether or not you get a participation trophy or if you get declared as a legend. When playing a team game, the setup is the same, except when placing a bet, the team makes one bet together. In battle, the goblins still all attack at once. The dwarves were individually make their rolls to defend. Any goblins that get defended will be pushed up so they're noted. After all dwarves have rolled their defense, any remaining attacking goblins, the attacks would come in and the dwarves would decide who takes which attack. They can't split the damage though. So in this case, one is one goblin's attacking for one and one goblin is attacking for two damage. They can have one person take the one and one person take the two, but you can't have, for example, in this case, if this was attacking for two, they could not split that damage. One person would have to take the full attack. When teams attack, the dwarves take turn. So this dwarf would go, they would roll, they would find out if they killed anything. In this case, they didn't. Then this dwarf would go, they would roll, find out that they had two hits, decide, okay, well, I'm going to kill this one. And instead of putting it into a bone pile, it goes into an individual discard for that dwarf. At the end of, of the tunnel run, when they get out, the individual dwarves get paid off for the goblins that they specifically killed. In a versus game, each dwarf would get their own individual bet, and they would grab the counters for that dwarf. Here's the blue dwarf, here's the red dwarf. Then, during battle, when a dwarf kills one, they mark it. And that dwarf now ignores that goblin. So they could kill them, then this one could kill one. At some point, the blue is done, and they declare that they've done with this battle, and the red dwarf can continue to fight until they either kill all the dwarves 
from the Reds' perspective or die or flee. Before moving on to the next round, you would get the payout for killing the goblins. So in this case, let's say the red dwarf fleed. They killed two. So they would get two gold for killing those and they would be out, for, out of the tunnels. Blue would get their three and then these would be pushed aside and then continued to the next round of battle if that's what blue chooses to do. So the recap on that is that in team games and versus games, all of the dwarves are in the same battle at the same time, and that you don't progress to the next battle until that one is completely finished, either in a team game where the team has finished the battle or in a versus game where every individual dwarf has finished the battle from their perspective. In my next video, I'm going to do in a playthrough for a, say, a one-player game and a playthrough for a two-player game. Uh, both team and I'll do one for rivals. Go, go to the website, dannyburble.com. Go download Dwarven Mind Shenanigans. Print it out, play it. I think you'll have a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making it and I have a lot of fun playing it, which is why I continued to make it. Um, this version of the game is free. So I would also be interested in any feedback from people. Let me know what you thought. I'm probably going to take it to another level. I'm probably going to look at getting some actual pieces printed. I'm looking into some print and play publishers, things like that, uh, because I am enjoying the game and I think it's a lot of fun and I do want to share it. All right, look for my other videos where I actually do a playthrough of one player, two player, etc.